I just started the recording. So strap in your seats because I'm going to go really fast uh, through several things because yesterday was a breakthrough of sorts in several regards. Uh, let me first pull up my old calendar and then share my screen. Uh, so take down notes. I'm going to go probably too fast for you to do it alongside me. Um, I'll try to make a note of like, these are the notes to take. Okay. But here we go. Do you see my calendar? Yes. Yes. Okay. This is my old one. I know it's my old one because up here in the upper right, it shows what Google account uh, calendar this is. This is my Aaron and Realty One Group goal. Okay. Uh, I've already transferred over most of my stuff, but and I'm doing this from memory, so forgive me. I go to settings. This is the only thing I didn't prepare for. So forgive me. Oh, there it is. Import and export. Okay. So go to your old calendar, settings, and then in the left-hand menu, look for import and export. Of course, our old calendar we want to export. And I pick, I don't think I can pick, I'm just exporting all of them. And I hit export. It shows at the bottom, creating export file, this may take a while. So then I get a uh, iCal zip folder. I save it, of course you always wanna know where did I save it, okay? Now I'm going to switch to my now new calendar. You can tell because in the upper right hand corner, I have my Aaron, my Realty Lab um, account showing. Now you can see over here on the left, I have already uh, brought in a couple of calendars. Okay. Um, but, so I'm not gonna finish the process, but on the new one, I go to settings. Left-hand menu, import and export, except this time I'm importing. I'm some fancy tech importer, exporter. Um, so if I'm importing, I select the file. Oh, wait, let me back up. Yeah, yeah, I want this to my calendar. Okay, so I select the file. Uh, because I exported more than one um, calendar, I put it in a zip file. So that means I'm going to need to first unzip my zipped folder. Uh, so I've gone to that folder. I'm going to hit extract all. Uh, when I closed Joe Mendoza, if you guys remember him, uh, his stuff automatically transferred over. So I'm going to delete that. I don't need that one. Um, I don't need Alex Richardson's. Um, we had a public calendar. I had a copy of Judy's old calendar. You'll see this one says address book contacts. You know what that calendar shows me? For those contacts for whom I have a birthday. Or anniversary date. Or anniversary date. Well, no, not anniversary date. This is just address book. So let's okay. say, Karen, that you are a contact of mine and maybe I've linked your Facebook account and maybe on your Facebook account, you've shared your birthday with your friends. If so, then my contact is going to know it and it's going to put it onto my calendar. It's pretty fancy. Um, so so, that's so it, won't, it won't show like the anniversary close date of escrow, that type of thing, if you have it in your uh, contact? If you have other dates that you've manually put into your contacts, yes, yes it will. Okay. Um, and then of course my own calendar, okay? So I'm gonna pretend that I'm doing it just on my own calendar, okay? So I remember that I put it in downloads, dump, and then uh, calendars, this calendar, okay? So I go back to select file from your computer. I select the calendar that I want to import. I click open. And then, and I already did this, so I'm not going to click the last button, but then I click import. So a lot of little steps, but the overall process is pretty easy, right? One last time on overview, you go to your old calendar, set uh, settings, import and export, and then you export your calendar. You make note of where you saved it. Then you go to your new calendar, 
settings, import and export, select import, upload the calendar you want to import, voila, there you are. Okay. And so now what you'll see, uh, almost ready, almost ready. Now what you'll see is over on the left hand side, I've got a couple of calendars that I can select or not. I can turn on birthdays, I can turn it off. Um, I can turn off the holidays okay. in the United States. Um, I even, because I'm fancy like that, um, brought in a calendar from Metrolist and then one that's associated with leads from a separate source that I use. Hmm. Okay, questions? I have a question. So um, the only calendar I use is the one on my cell phone. You know, that, that icon that's mm -hmm. on your cell phone or the app or whatever? That's what I use. So how do I know how to, how do I import that? Um, it depends. If you have um, done this process before, which I've talked about on several occasions about consolidating everything that your phone uses to just your Google account. I don't know if you're using a calendar that syncs with your iCloud or if oh, it's yeah. a oh, yeah. Google account calendar. Um, you'll notice on my own phone, however, so as to not get confused, at the bottom you'll see the calendar app that I use. It's not the default iPhone calendar. It's <clears throat> the Google Calendar product. And that's just because I know when I'm doing it on my laptop, I just want it to be an interface that makes sense, that matches. So I don't know in your case. Um, we, can, we can connect separately if you wish. Um, but it would have to do with going into your settings on your phone to find out uh, what is your underlying source that is syncing, if it's your iCloud or whether it's your Google account or maybe you've got a Yahoo account, I don't know. So it'll depend. Uh, but partly you'll know if you go to your uh, old calendar on, if you go to your old calendar, your old Google calendar on a web page, then at least you'll see here, like I can see what are the actual appointments that are on here. And if there's like nothing on there, then that's another way of knowing like, uh, that must not be the one I was using. Okay. So Mike, so I have a question also. Yes. Um, but I don't know, I'm echoing. I don't, I don't think it's me, but anyway. Um, so I have the same thing. I use the iCalendar. Um, I, I can re I can Google search it to see how to, how to sync the Google Calendar with the iCalendar, but I do it simply because the my family calendar if i'm going to schedule something i want to make sure that my wife doesn't have something scheduled to our calendar sync her schedule my schedule do we need i need those calendars to sync so if there's a way to sync my i calendar with my google calendar that would be ideal that's first question second question is. has to do with something else yeah there is okay i'll i'll find uh, you'll it. see the way i would figure that out is by just doing what each of us can do I'm searching how to export iCalendar to Google calendars. Right, that's, and that's what I was talking about. I just, I'll Google search it. It's, it's yeah. gonna be simple enough. It's gonna enough. be the it's same a process uh, on a high level. You'll export your iCal calendar to a place on your computer where then you can import it. Okay, uh, so here. that leads me to second question. And, I take... and it can stay synced, sorry. And it can stay synced so that you don't need to worry about like switching everything over. As you see here in my view, other calendars, Right, I can turn on another calendar. And when I hit the button for Metrolist calendar, you can see, for example, today at 10, there's a home snap webinar. At 1 p.m., there's an auto prospecting calendar. On Friday, there's a MLS Essentials. These are all appointments that are not my appointments and they're not static. It's just a sync. So Metrolist's calendar may work like your eye calendar. It runs on its own, but it's being consolidated and appearing yeah. here. So it's not that you need to make a total conversion. You can also essentially subscribe to that calendar. Okay. So now when I try to import my Realty One Group calendar, it's I'm missing a step, I think, because I import it straight from my downloads folder. And when I go, I mean, when I, when I uh, uh, upload it and then I click import, it gives me, we couldn't import this file. It's, it's still a zip file though. That's probably so why. Uh, and I accidentally had to backtrack on my own. 
if you export more than one file, it's going to put it into a zip folder. You can't do anything with a zip folder. You have to unzip it first. Almost like something that comes in a sealed package. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to unseal the package before you can access what's in it. And so to do Got that, it. you just Thanks. go to the, the zip folder and you'll need to unzip uh, its contents so that you can access individual files. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to do what it, ha what it has in there is the address book and um, the something. It's got two files in there. Right. So like you can see on my screen, I mean, I have like, what is this, seven? And therefore, when I export it, I think I'm in between programs. Uh, when I export it, it becomes a zip folder. And so like you can see here, it shows something, something dot zip, and the type is a zip folder. So I'm gonna hit save. If you're on a Mac, it's gonna be a slightly different process, but overall it's the same. Then I need to go to that location that I just downloaded, right? 9.49 AM, this one. I need to double click on it. And then in Windows at least, there's a button here, extract all. That will then pull oh. out the individual files so that they can be accessed. That's probably what happened. Okay, hopefully okay. I'm not trying to do too many things, but that's how you can uh, bring your calendars current. That's a bonus, even though I started with it. Um, let's get to the first item. Uh, without video feed, it's not easy to just see a thumbs up, but I'm gonna still pause for a quick second and ask you, all if you have access to and know how to log into your new side provisioned DocuSign account. If so, log into it. Yes, you guys know how to do that? Yes. Yes. If you don't, I, just don't, know, I don't know how to do it while I'm on Zoom. Uh, it's in a different window, right? I mean, the Zoom window. Exit full screen. Okay. Um, if you don't know what your DocuSign account is, here's a cute little hack that will fix it. It's called do the forgot password process. Enter <laughs> in your new at my Realty lab uh, email address. It'll send you an email. You click on that link in order to reset your password. Be smart, pick a unique password. Be smarter, write it down. And if you're brilliant, what you do is you use a password management program. If you're like Nobel winning prize brilliant, you'll select a program that will sync across devices. The one that I use is called RoboForm. Other good ones are LastPass, OnePass, that kind of stuff. Usually the free version will do it just on that device. Uh, but sometimes you're on your mobile, sometimes you're on uh, your iPad, sometimes you're on your computer, sometimes you're on the home computer, right? So it's best if you use a product that synchronizes your passwords. Anyway, so log into your DocuSign account, and I'm going to show you what in the video game world they call an Easter egg. Who knows what an Easter egg is? In software and video game terminology, anybody? Look at yeah, all this we're just, stuff we're gonna learn. Huh? I just know what an Easter egg is, <laughs> regular Easter egg. So an Easter egg is of course this uh, thing that you <clears throat> find and it has goodies inside, right? So in video games and somewhere, sometimes in software, um, an Easter egg refers to something that the programmer inserts but doesn't tell anybody about. And so sometimes you may bump into it on accident and it's full of goodies. Um, mm. So, okay, I'm going to use my password software management program to remind me what my own password is and to log in. Right, so Aaron, so this, is for the, this is for the new account um, that we have with Realty Lab? Yes. Okay, I, I don't know what the password is for that. Like okay. I just mentioned, just use the forgot password process to find it out. Okay, okay so uh, and if you want, we can do on a different day, how can you make a fancy signature that replicates your actual signature? Of course, you can always upload a photo if you wish. I like, you know, grabbing hold of stuff and figuring it out. But um, in your DocuSign account, click on templates. 
I created yesterday three templates. That's not so much the Easter egg, but checkity check this out. Shared with me. Are you ready for a surprise? Bam! Do you see all of this? Mm -hmm. These are disclosures for anywhere and everywhere. I mean, there's even a San Jose tree disclosure in case you needed it. And all of these disclosures are automatically tagged. They're ready to go. You don't need to do anything. So there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Please, please don't use zip forms. Just don't. Um, if someone hands you a brand new, super powerful $3,000 computer, stop using your six-year-old HP and use the new program, right? That's kind of what I'm uh, suggesting here as it relates to drop zip forms, use the app, and then use DocuSign, which here has all these disclosures. Now, I want to pause for a moment and tell you, this is what the process is ideally supposed to be regarding seller disclosures. I'm going to go through this chronologically, okay? And we're going to say, what happens when I am engaging with a seller to take a listing? Okay. As you know, step one is, is it gonna be my listing or do we not know this yet, right? So you, you gotta make sure you know, is this going to be my listing? If the person calls you and says, hey, you helped me buy this house, I'm moving, I only wanna talk to you, you know, let's do this. Then maybe you do your CMA and listing presentation together with uh, your listing paperwork and seller disclosures. Maybe you wanna do that all at once. Uh, but if you don't know, it's like, hey, I don't know you. We're talking to some people thinking about selling. You know, we want to get an opinion of value in the house. All right, whatever. Do that step first, right? Don't waste time and effort on steps that haven't yet occurred. But once you've got this sense, hey, I think this is going to be my listing, um, you'll use the side app as I demonstrated on multiple occasions. And uh, as the side learning portal, portal shows you uh, how to easily you'll create your listing paperwork. Then you will email your TC. Rebecca's email is tc at myrealtylab.com. She's doing TC for everyone at the company. She's doing TC still for a few uh, pre-existing clients from before she ever affiliated with us. Um, She's got a family for which she's the primary child caregiver. She's got a ailing mother. They've got three people with coronavirus. And she had the dog bite that sent her to the ER. My point is, don't send her an email and say, hey, I'm meeting with these people in two hours. Can you put it together? Right? Be fair with one another. The more notice, the better. Okay? Email her and ask her to prepare seller disclosures. Now, don't do that until you have already first filled out the cover sheet in the app and created your listing paperwork. Reason being, how is she supposed to know? And you don't have to go do double entry and say, you know, it's, it's Dave and it's Lindsay and here's their contact info. You're already doing that in the cover sheet. So just reference, it's for this address and all the info you'll need is in the cover sheet uh, within the app. And you know, I'm planning on meeting with them on Friday. Um, and if you could prepare them and then send it to me first for, uh, for me to approve in signing order, that way once you have it in your queue, then you can control when does it go out to your clients, right? You just don't finish your signing until you're ready for it to then go to the sellers to fill out. Does that make sense? As far as like the over overview, okay? Yeah, definitely, definitely. The way yeah. that Rebecca will do that is she will be using these templates that are in DocuSign to make her process easier as well. I want you guys to realize the efficiencies, realize the benefits and the time savings of doing that process. As you may have learned, in order to benefit from the assistance of other people, it does require you to be a little bit better planner, right? You can't be a 
uh, what I've heard called a seagull manager. Seagull managers, you don't know where they are, and then all of a sudden they fly overhead and pfft, and then they crap all over you, and then they disappear. Don't be like that. No one likes to work alongside with someone like that. Um, and in this sense, we're all kind of in it together in that Rebecca is a resource and she has the same amount of 24 hours in a day that the rest of us have. And if Monica is inefficient and if Kevin is disorganized, then it means Rebecca's processing time for Christy is slower. That's just an example. I'm sure Monica and Kevin are the most efficient people on the planet. But just you all get the point I'm saying here, right? So plan early, be organized, uh, and allow her to use the process that is most efficient for her and for you. So have completed the cover sheet, email her, give her some time to put it together, and make sure to mention, request, that you be first in the signing order so that she can send it to you whenever she can get to it, and then you can still you know, have the conversation with your client and say, okay, I'll send it to you. Okay, I just sent it to you. Right, you'll know because you'll just complete your uh, signing of the disclosures. Okay. Can I ask a quick I'm question? I'm only mentioning, almost, I'm only mentioning the fact that the templates are available to you in your own DocuSign accounts as a backup, as a plan B, just in case you forgot to ask Rebecca with sufficient notice just in case something is happening like all of a sudden and they're like, hey, we were gonna do it in three weeks, but something changed, we wanna do it today, how fast can we go, right? So you can. And if you do, that's fine, I'm sure Rebecca won't mind, but I'm just telling you, you won't, of course, save as much time by doing it yourself. You will still save time doing DocuSign as opposed to ZipForm, because DocuSign already has everything tagged. Okay, Karen. Okay, so when we ask Rebecca to send things over, do you, does the seller have to have already signed the listing paperwork? Or I, like I have it in queue, I just have it ready to send to them for signature. But I'm so used to sending seller disclosures at the same time and doing everything up front. So does it have to be completed first? Listing paperwork completely done first before she can send it over? Or can she access it if it's waiting for signature. I'm, I'm gonna respond with more of like a principle or a rule of thumb than a hard, fast uh, process or requirement. And that is, how would any of us feel preparing paperwork that ended up being a waste of time because in the end they didn't agree to the listing, right? No one likes to feel that their time got wasted. Uh, Rebecca doesn't get paid for each task she does. She's not, as you know, she's not an employee, so she doesn't get paid regardless just for doing work. Uh, so she would have wasted her time if she did it, and in fact, something went backwards. So I'd say be as certain as you can. The most certain way, of course, is that the listing paperwork already got signed. If you feel you are 98% certain, even though it's not signed, you know, whatever, ask. But let's not abuse that concept, that privilege, uh, and, and disregard that principle and start saying, hey, I have a listing I think I might get, so can you prepare the listing disclosures? Uh, Rebecca does not have to, she's not an employee. She doesn't have to take any one of these. She can fire you if you know, you're know you ridiculous, disorganized, inefficient, and uh, taking advantage of her. So I would, I would say it like in that sense, right? Uh, I'm not going to care so much that it be only after. And it's not like there's a workflow on software that requires this step before you can move to the next step. So just be reasonable. Is that a fair answer? Yeah, it's fair. Um, and is the MLS profile sheet part of those seller disclosures? No, it is not. Uh, let me pause though before I get to the MLS profile sheet. Are there any last questions regarding seller disclosures? Uh, Judy, Judy, can you make sure to give Monica one of these two? Monica just walked in. One of those. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, those two. Uh, so, seller disclosures, good. Check. All right, next item. Um, 
these things that have been put in here uh, have been done by other people outside. Um, if I sort by owner, oh, that's right. Because these are shared globally. Now, I also created three templates yesterday. One of those is the uh, MLS residential listing profile sheet. And I have shared it, not with everyone at side. My loyalty is to Realty Lab. I mean, you know, we want to be nice. They're like our cousins, extended family, whatever. Um, but you should also see that as well in your templates. The templates that you intend to use frequently, here's another fun feature. You can hit star and that puts them in a separate category, which is called favorites. I don't need to get overwhelmed with that whole list of everything that's shared with me. I just need to keep track of the things that are relevant to me. I probably don't need an old outdated version of the seller disclosures. I probably don't need seller disclosures for Texas. I probably don't need the San Jose tree disclosure, but the ones that are relevant to me, maybe I want to star those and favorite them. So, Karen Gustafson, for you, <laughs> I made this template. Thank you. Uh, and I fussed with it so that it should be perfect. Um, this view doesn't show that things are fillable, but yes, they are, okay? Um, now, to the rest of you who are like, what? I've never seen that before. What even is that? Um, that's, a fair, uh, that's a fair reaction. Because, uh, as everybody here knows, at Realty One Group Gold, this was not a required document that you needed to turn in. This is called Karen uh, was and probably still is a better office manager than I ever will be. <laughs> and so I think this is a carryover from when Karen uh, ran an office of her own. Can you imagine poor Karen having to like deal with the way things are now? Oh, <laughs> you're such an angel. Anyway. Um, and so we do not have that as a requirement. We didn't at Realty One Group Gold, nor is it a requirement at Realty Lab. But it is, I agree, a good best practice to minimize liability. Why is that? Because this form shows, oh, I'm not even sharing my screen, am I? Here I am talking about stuff like you're seeing it. <laughs> Someone's gotta tell me like, are you thinking we know what you're doing? Because we're not seeing your screen. All right, so you star stuff, right? It shows up in your favorites, right? Uh, but the form itself, as you see, is essentially all of the fields that need to be completed uh, in order to upload the listing, right? Now, the benefit of having, as you see here, having the seller do it and then the initial it is they now can't say, I never said, that there was sewer in street. In fact, it's on a septic tank, right? Sometimes we make assumptions. I bought a property to flip once, right next to Byer High School, right in the friggin' middle of town. What? It's not on sewer? I didn't know that until after I bought it. Um, that's the only reason I knew as a seller that uh, there was no sewer in street. So just as an example, it reduces our liability to make sure that it's the seller who said, these are the things my house has. Now, does the seller know all of these different things? You know, trees few versus tree many versus split possible. Uh, it doesn't mean that you must adhere to whatever they might answer. It just means it's a guideline, right? So use that as you wish. However, it does bring me to the next item on the list which refers to the MLS partial entry. So in a listing, I'm now here in the app. I've got listing services. I've got MLS partial save. If you open it, uh, I think this will autofill information from the cover sheet, but this is just a practice thing. Uh, do you want a partial save uploaded to MLS? Sure. Okay, if you want us to upload the files, sorry, photo files or other attachments, then you need to put them here so that the person doing it actually has that information. Don't go outside the system. Don't be doing extra emails. 
You know what it's like when you're looking for something one place and the person's like, uh, no, I sent it over there. Didn't you see it? Don't do that. Don't make life difficult for those that uh, cooperate with you. Uh, any additional comments? Now, generally speaking, this is what will happen. The person who does it, who I will tell you who that is in a moment, will only be able to put in the information that you provided to them. If all you do is say, yeah, give me a partial save, yes, uh, submit, what does the person know? I mean, they know the address and whatever they can get yeah. off the cover sheet. They do know from the uh, documents what the list price is and the listing period, right? But they don't know anything else. Remember, no one can read your mind. So if you want someone to do something for you, you have to give them the information. You have to give them the tools. If you want them to go buy something for you on, on your card, you have to give them your card. If you want them to take your car in to the shop, you need to give them your keys, et cetera, that basic principle, right? So um, how much of the upload is done will depend entirely on you. How much information did you put in front of that person? If all you put was this, Minimum, all you're gonna get is what's on the listing agreement and the address. If you put all the photos and seller disclosures and a termite report that you want uploaded as an attached document, and you put in the additional comments, please see the completed listing, uh, what's it called? Listing profile sheet that I've uploaded, which is this document, then the person will enter this information as well. Okay, now I will share it now as a personal opinion and recommendation. There's certain things I'm okay to delegate. There's certain things that are harder for me to delegate. I'm sure that's true of all of you as well. Um, I personally take great pride in my listing as being part of my portfolio of work for the future. And as you know, you never get a second chance to make a first impression hits the market, first, you know, 36, 48 hours, everyone's looked at it, that's gonna look at it practically. Uh, I'm very particular about that kind of thing. Um, I know for me, even if I had the seller fill this out, I'm not thinking it's gonna be perfectly accurate. They don't know this kind of stuff. Um, and I also know that honestly, I've uploaded enough listings in MLS. Personally, it would take me longer to fill this out on DocuSign than it would be to just do it in MLS. So like if it's really important to you that you don't do it, you don't need to do it. Maybe I evolve over time, but initially I don't even intend to request the MLS partial save uh, because you know, uploading the, pho the, the photos here takes just as long as uploading it to MLS. Um, filling out the profile sheet, I think is going to take longer than just inputting the listing. Uh, so I'm not saying that you have to do it, but I am saying, saying that it is an option. Oh, one last thing I forgot to tell you. The person doing it is bless her heart, Rebecca. If you're wondering why is the TC fee 400 instead of 300, this is yet another reason why. She didn't used to do seller disclosures on listings. He will now. She didn't use to do MLS partial sales. She's willing to now. Um, it's of course limited to what you provide to her. Now, Gus, hopefully you're listening and can answer. Does Rebecca know your MLS login? No. Then how the heck is she gonna input your listing? Yep. No, no, that's a real question. Well, I've gotta give it to, I gotta give it to her. Only if you give it to her, right? Again, I want someone to go put gas in my car. I got to give them the keys or we can't do it. So in the additional comments, my MLS login is password is, okay? Those of you who know me, you know, my rule number one of communication is what? I'll give you a hint. It makes an ass out of you and me. Assumption. Never assume anything. So I could just say like, well, I thought she already had it because I gave it to her that one time. Maybe she does. 
but that's an assumption. And then she might look at it the following business day and reply saying, I need your login. You may not see that until the following day. And then you're frustrated. Ah! That's totally preventable. How? Provide it. Just every time. If I had the granular control per field to like program the app, I would like literally require those fields in here before you could even be allowed to hit the submit button to like make it foolproof. Okay. If Rebecca is perfect and walks on water, then maybe you only need to give it to her once and then she'll always have it. But last I checked, every single person in this room has lost their own password before. So don't expect perfection. Um, there was one line I liked from uh, last night's debate. Chris Wallace said to Joe Biden, quoting Joe Biden's father to him, he said, I believe it was your father who often said, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. I like that idea. So don't compare Rebecca either to the almighty, compare her to the alternative, which is you, right? Don't expect her to be more perfect than you. If you struggle with passwords sometimes, don't expect or assume that she's got it down perfect. I'm not saying she doesn't, I'm just saying don't assume. So remember to provide it every single time. Any questions on the MLS partial entry and or the MLS listing form? No. Capiche? Yeah. I don't want to assume. That's why I'm pausing to check. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, last thing on my answers. No, two more things. Yikes, I got to go fast. Uh, refers to another template, which is the PEED. Uh, if you can each verify for me please uh you're in your docusign you click templates you select shared with me and you can find among the list if you want you can even just type in peed and search for it it's not shared with me in my case because of course i created it so it's not shared with me but it should show up as a result for you do each of you and then do me a favor when you find it uh star it if there's any document you're going to be using frequently in DocuSign directly, it's probably the P, like for every property you show, right? Uh, so mark it as favorite, and then go to favorites and you should see it there. Please let me know if you've completed that process. Otherwise, let me know if you have a question or can't do yes. it for some reason. Well, on this DocuSign, I have it because I'd have to just go in and you know set it up for myself. I'm not sure I follow, what do you mean? Um, so remember initially when you got onto this DocuSign and I, and you said, oh, you could just click forgot password. I've never oh, logged like on with Realty in your, password, password. You're in your account. Yeah, so I haven't even done that part yet. Yeah. yeah I, haven't either. I still haven't even canceled my old one. Uh, and you don't have to cancel the old one before you do the new one. Um, you should not forget to, but uh, yeah. definitely go in today, use the forgot password, do it while it's fresh on your mind. Otherwise... You all know this, right? Stuff that takes two minutes, you should do it right away. Because if you don't, who knows the next time you'll, you'll think of it. You might never think of it again. And you're gonna be all frustrated like, where's my disclosures? Right? So just make a point to do it. Uh, Gus, Monique, Juliana, Jackie, what about you guys? Yeah, I got it. Gus got, I got it. it. Perfect. Yep, good. Good, Juliana? who's probably tending other kids doing school on Zoom, which I know is a real chore. I swear, moms who are like half teachers these days should get a tax credit uh, for providing governmental services that used to be provided by schools, but now are being provided by moms. What do you guys think? Amen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, you can tell that there is there are two versions. There's the agent plus one visitor, there's the agent plus two visitors, right? Select accordingly. Uh, and then they are all for signature at the same time. Uh, they don't go to anybody else except the signers once they've been completed. So the way you'll send it to the other agent is of course, everyone signs it, you'll get an email that says it's been completed. And then you forward that email to that seller's agent regarding that property. Okay, and then the last item has to do with photographer or photography. 
I'm about 90% through that project. Um, I need to touch base one more time with that person. Uh, but I'm far enough into believing that it will come together that I'm okay to tell you all what it is. Uh, if I come here to the side app into my practice listing and I click in listing services. Of course, I have this one here. If this is the kind of thing that trips you up, oh, that's right, it's because I'm looking at a different task. I can either hit cancel or minimize. I'm gonna hit the minimize button. Now I can now see again the list of all the documents, uh, list of the listing services tasks. You can see I have one already in progress. Why? Because I'm testing. Why do I test stuff? Because I don't want to ever assume. I don't want the first time I do something to be live with a client, right? You don't try a new instrument uh, when you're in the middle of a concert, right? You gotta do that configuring and testing and verifying, double checking beforehand. So I encourage you to do that as well. Okay, so for photographer, quick pause to remind you, here's how it works. You'll pay a marketing fee. The marketing fee assumes, sorry, no. The marketing fee gets charged regardless. Uh, how do I say this? My card is on file with this photographer. It is not on file for other photographers. Therefore, if you choose a different photographer, that is an additional duplicative out-of-pocket cost of your own. So don't do that. Use the one that's provided for you as part of that marketing fee. Photographer's name is Sean Carson. Aaron? Do you mind if I get through it really quick first? In case I'm about to maybe answer the question. The photographer's name is Sean Carson. He was one of the founders of 39 Pixels, uh, except he decided to go off on his own. You guys know what that's like? I do. Um, his quality of work is as good. I mean, maybe better, but I mean, it's good. Uh, I've used him before on my own stuff. I like his work. I like his turn time. I like his quality. It's really good. You all know how picky I am. Probably it's good enough for you too. If you have at some point some truly special listing, um, you know, it's over a million bucks, or, uh, and, and Sean will know to contact you if uh, the property or your request goes outside the bounds of his normal pricing, which I have arranged um, based on the expectation of what he will be getting as an annual volume of work from us as a company. So it's bulk discount pricing and it's flat rate pricing, unless the property is over 4,000 square feet or unless it's a ranchette or other outbuildings uh, or, or features of the property beyond a normal residential subdivision home. And uh, so if that's the case before doing it, he will reach out to you uh, and say, beyond the normal flat rate pricing that I'm charging Aaron, it'll be an extra whatever, because you're doing a $1.4 million home with five outbuildings and 20 acres of almonds on the golf course and you want pictures of the golf course too, right? Um, so in, I'm gonna say 98% of the listings that we take, um, this will apply. One of the last items I'm looking, uh, I'm, I'm waiting to hear back on is what is his geographic service area? It's clearly not everywhere, uh, but I wanna get that dialed in. Um, I'm taking a listing, for example, in Oakland. I don't think he does Oakland. So there'll be a few situations where it's outside the normal parameters, okay? But your normal everyday central value listing, uh, residential home, um, the way it will work is once you've got your listing, and this, Karen, yes, absolute hard must have a signed agreement first. Um, you'll click on photographer. Uh, I need to do a different one. I'm going to use a practice one that looks like from Monique. No, I can't get to that one yet. I will use... I'll use Maria's. She's not here to tell me now. Uh, so I go to listing services. I go to photographer, videographer. In the drop-down list, you just pick Realty Lab. I've asked, there's no way to get rid of the ones that the entire 1,100 plus agents across a few different states use. It's just a global directory. 
So I figured to make it easiest for us to remember, we're like, oh, that's one of the services Realty Lab provides for me for that marketing fee. Therefore, to make it easy, and this will be the case for other vendors that are part of this marketing fee that are in this option, you'll just select the Realty Lab one, okay? Uh, you'll select the options. You want exterior, interior, do you want twilight? Just go ahead and check all of them. Local amenities, you'll see there's a star here, which means it's a required field. The submit button is grayed out. It says error in seven fields. This is one of them. Local amenities, um, this is in case, and if there aren't any, you just do NA, okay? But let's suppose that the property is maybe across the street from a park. Uh, maybe it's in an HOA and uh, there's something else that you want pictures of. Um, so I'm going to say that's probably like one in every 15 or 20 listings. Is there something special off the property lot itself? So in most cases, you'll just do an A. Uh, home square footage, put that in. Are there certain views that should be highlighted? So the very kinds of things you would say in a conversation, again, this helps streamline. Remember that 600 hours a year of time savings? It's through things like this, okay? So you'd say things like... Um, Please uh, feature what? Backyard, pool, pavilion, and man cave and garage. Something like that, right? But just things that you want to make sure aren't forgotten, okay? Um, extra pics of kitchen, please. Stuff like that. Property access, who is occupying the property? You'll need to let the photographer, of course, know this, okay? Who's providing access? Is there a lockbox? Don't say yes if it's just an MLS one. Remember, this is not an agent or an appraiser. So if, that, if there is a combo box, uh, so you just say, let's say it's vacant, and you say combo box, then you'll want to say, you know, box on what? Gas meter at side of home. Code is whatever. 4392, is there a gate code? No, et cetera, right? Um, you'll want to save at least one. Sean requests that you do, in fact, give three uh, because this is not going through his normal scheduling uh, process. So in case there is a conflict, you'll save yourself and him extra back and forth by just doing a, a first preference. So let's say, I mean, it's vacant, so if he can do it tomorrow sometime. If not, then, uh, you know, next available. And if even then, then maybe Saturday or whatever, right? You get the idea there. Do buy. When do you need it back? Uh, listing goes live. Tuesday, 10, 6, please get to me by 10, 5 at the latest. Let me know if this is not possible. Something like that, okay? Additional information, any other special instructions? Uh, there's a hole in the fence and a dog next door. Make sure it's safe, whatever, right? Something, uh, and then another field for additional notes, okay? So that's how that works. Uh, when you do that, uh, it goes to agent services at side who will then pass along that information to Sean's email that I put in the vendor uh, setup. Uh, he will get that email. He will go and shoot your photos. If you haven't provided answers or information that he needs, he may contact you. Um, but I don't know why that should be necessary, right? Again, when you're working with another person, it can save you time. However, it does put a little bit higher organizational burden on you to be organized and communicate clearly. So please fill out as many uh, fields as apply. Okay, Christy. Hopefully I didn't lose you. I'm now ready for your question if I didn't already answer. Uh, hold on one quick second. No worries. Anyone else have a question on that process? How long does it usually take for the photos to get back to us? 
uh, usually one or two business days. Okay. And does he do often the... next business day? But of course, as you can imagine, just like with us, sometimes okay. everyone wants it on the same Wednesday, Thursday. It can be a little bit longer. Right. And will he provide a floor plan for us? Oh, thank you. I forgot that. Um, so I'm going to have a whole separate contract with him. Okay. Here's what is required every single time. There's a couple things I'm gonna tell you are not yet figured out. That's part of that last 10% that I hope to finalize today. Uh, but what is required, I'm sorry, what is included in every uh, photo order? Photos. Uh, he said he never does less than 36. Most smaller homes, meaning under 2000 feet, you'll get 36 to 45 ish photos. If it's the kind of property where it's gonna need more than 60 just to communicate the idea, you can imagine that's not very often. That's part of that 4,000 square feet plus or additional outbuildings, ranchette type of deal, then he'll let you know, okay? But it's, it's usually, it's called 35 to 55 photos. Um, and let me go to the, you'll want to request all of these each time, exterior, interior, exterior, twilight, interior, twilight. Nevertheless, this is what you will get. You will always get, even if you don't check it, uh, one exterior twilight. It's just part of the package. Uh, and it's not in place of regular daylight. So uh, your curb shot will be daylight and a twilight version, which is more dramatic. Uh, everyone will also include a virtual tour uh, that is on Matterport which if you've experienced that, even just in looking as a buyer agent, uh, includes like a dollhouse view. And when you look over from above, you get a sense of the floor plan. Um, the things I am waiting to hear back on, that last 10% that we're working out details on, is whether that will include drone and whether that will include floor plan. He does not now or hasn't been doing floor plans, period. I told him, I've been doing floor plans, period. If I can do it, you can do it. Uh, but there's an additional hard cost because you, you submit documents to a third party somewhere in Europe, I think they're in the Netherlands. Uh, and then one business day later, they get it to you. So it's not even something that he can just eat it and just say like, okay, sure, I'll just do that too. Like there's an actual hard cost. So that's why that part is being discussed still. I will say, however, that if you're getting a full Matterport, the majority of the time, I believe people want a floor plan in order to get a sense of how does the property flow? Like I see the still photos and that looks really cool, but like where is the formal dining in relation to the casual dining, right? That whole thing. You'll accomplish that objective by doing the, you know, walk through the house on a virtual tour. And as you zoom out and you do your little from above dollhouse, you'll even see, oh, the master is off by itself or, oh, the master's right behind the kitchen, eh, right? So you'll, you'll still, I'm gonna say, accomplish the majority of what a floor plan does. And to tell you the truth, the floor plan itself is a rendering. It's not like it's architectural blueprints. I mean, that's a huge additional cost. That's not worth doing for anybody, unless you're gonna remodel after you bought the house. Uh, so I'm not yet entirely certain regarding floor plan. Uh, and then the drone normally is an additional charge. I'm trying to negotiate based on volume discount to see uh, whether we can get that included as well. And I'll know that uh, within a day or so. Christy. Well, uh, what Karen asked is kind of basically along the lines of, of my questions. Um, drone, super important for me. I do it every listing now. Mm -hmm. And um, I pay a total of about $345 for, you know, ton of pictures that kind of package. and drone. Yeah, that, yeah. So with virtual tours. And then my other question. Yeah, I had it. I, I just didn't upload it on my last. Yeah, day. usually it's $350, $375 for that kind of a package. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let me so, get back to you regarding the drone thing. Yeah, yeah. we're working on that. Okay, sounds good. And then if there's additional uh, pictures that need to be taken for whatever reason um is he going to give them to us at a discount since he's already getting our business without you know ever having worked with us 
Uh, help me understand better your question. What do you mean? Well, like for example, me, I have I have some favorite people that I like to work with that obviously I wouldn't be able to work with anymore, and it is kind of upsetting to hear that. Um, just because you know we all we all get um, we all make what is a simple word I'm looking for uh, our own contacts and then re establish relationships. relationships, and now we got to let that go, and so that is a bit disheartening. I'm not gonna be dishonest about my feelings. Uh, that is disheartening to me. Um, but if he's just going to get our business, is he going to um, give us a discount on additional pictures um, if we need them? Are you talking about like, again, your 1 million plus luxury property or something over 4,000 square feet or something with outbuildings like a ranch hat, therefore it needs it to showcase the property? Or are you talking about like, a 2,000 square foot home that needs more than 50 photos or 55 photos? Yeah, both, both. So in the first case, um, the volume discount pricing that I'm negotiating is such that, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, if there are more than, uh, sorry, if the property has multiple outbuildings or a ranchette or over 4,000 square feet or like realistically needs more than 60 photos in order to demonstrate the property, uh, then he will contact you and he will say, hey, for this property due to, you know, the nature of it and, and how much work will, need, uh, will be necessary, it will be an extra whatever. Please let me know if that's okay. If that's not okay, you can always reach out to me and say like, this is ridiculous. I don't want to use him for this one. And we can talk about that. Uh, he, he's quite reasonable though. So I don't think that it will be something where you're going to feel like, you know, he's like making it up on the back end kind of stuff. Like, oh, because we need an extra 10 photos, it's an extra 200 bucks. It, it's not going to be like that. He understands that this is a, uh, this is an important opportunity. So like, you don't want to blow it. Just like you wouldn't push your luck too much and say like, Fannie Mae used to pay me 2.75%. and They give me a hundred deals a year, but now they went to 2.5 and I'm not going to stand for that. No, you're going to stand for that because you're going to say like, it's worth it. So um, if it does need that, so I'm talking to the first case, high end luxury home, over 4,000 square feet and or ranch at with multiple outbuildings, then before proceeding, he'll let you know if that is the case and you can decide what you wanna do at that point. To the first situation, um, let's say it's a four bed, two and a half bath, 2,000 square foot home uh, in a subdivision. I mean, there's like what, eight, nine rooms in the house uh, there's a backyard. Like every every room's gonna every bedroom's gonna get at least two photos. The master's probably gonna get three. The master bathroom's probably gonna get three. Kitchen's probably gonna have four. There's a point I'm gonna say a law of diminishing returns. I don't know that a 2,000 square feet uh, square foot home needs 96 photos. It just gets to the point where it's repetitive. And if you've been um, if you've ever looked at homes that have that, there's, you don't even go through all the photos. You're like, okay, I get the idea. Or you're skipping through, like, let me just get to the last 10 where I can start seeing the backyard. Uh, so to the second point, I'm gonna say, um, if there's a need that you have where you feel like it's important that you have 80 photos, you know, of your four bed home in a subdivision, talk to me in advance, I guess. I. I or, or anyone here can give me a, a scenario where you think that maybe is needed. I'm just not understanding when it would maybe be needed. But maybe I'm missing something. What do you guys think? I, I think between 35 and 45 photos is usually sufficient. But the other question I have is because it's a professional photographer taking the pictures, will we then still be able to use them on other outside marketing? Yes. If we, so will uh, the, the rights will be passed to you for your use. Perfect. Yeah, he's not one of those obnoxious people. You're only licensed to put this in MLS. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Christy, did I answer your question? I know that your video went off. Yeah, sorry, I had uh, somebody come in here, my daughter. Uh, but uh, yeah, that answers my question. Okay. Whew, we got through a lot. Okay, so we talked about exporting and importing calendars as a bonus. Uh, we talked about the Easter egg, meaning the hidden surprise in your DocuSign accounts, the shared templates. 
uh, we talked about within those shared templates, no, we talked about how the seller disclosures process works for taking a listing, um, the MLS partial entry, how that works, the MLS entry form, if you wanna use that and, and go that route, uh, and then also a streamlined way that you can process through your PEDS more quickly. And we did photography, that was a big day. Uh, obviously we blew way past our half hour. I appreciate everybody's patience. Are there any final questions regarding some of those topics before we just connect for today? No. No. No, thank you. Awesome. You guys have a great day. I will see you tomorrow. I don't know if I'm gonna have anything special, but you know, play around with stuff because uh, probably there'll be questions and we can answer them. And I may have been able to uh, finish up on the photography uh, final details. And uh, of course I have a list of other things. So I'll let you know. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow at 9.30. Take care, guys.